This conference will now be recorded. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> all right. <coughs> Marion County Commission, January 11th, 9 a.m. This time. Okay, so um, generally the first order of business when we reorganize the board is for the um, commission to vote on the chairman and the vice chairman. Is there a process you guys normally use? Do you rotate districts? It used to rotate, but when it went to five, it's, uh, last year it, it became with a nomination and a second vote. In prior years, it had been kind of, I guess, Randy, it's always been a kind of rotation. Yeah. Yeah, it was still by a vote of the commission. But right. was, yeah, still by the vote. Officers and vice chair. Well, I'd make a vote. Oh, are you making that motion? Oh, just discussion. Okay, discussion. Okay. I have a motion to make a, for a new vice chair. I make a motion to appoint Dave Crumpet for a new vice chair. Second. Second by Kat. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Mr. Vice Chairman. Thank you. <laughs> so are you willing to take it, the chairmanship? Randy? Got a motion for Randy. So moved. I'll second it. Second by Dave. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Five zero. Simple. Thank you, Randy, Mr. <laughs> Chair. Were you sweating it, Jonah? <laughs> it was a little bit. Nobody was saying anything. Especially, especially Dave, Dave goes and said, well, just leave it the same. No, when Dave said leave it the same, I found him a little cross eye over there. Uh, <laughs> that really stirred up the water. Are you doing this stuff? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Like like most committees, sometimes <laughs> remove the nominations. <laughs> they remove the seats, or yeah, they cease <laughs> real quick. All right. <laughs> Thank you for your service, Joe. That is that is the first thing of order of business here, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. You're welcome, sir. And thank you for the gavel. Stay, stay right over there. <laughs> All right. Uh oh, we're gonna have to run the race of seafood tape after doing that. <laughs> I'm about to lower my head, I'm sure. Just for some discussion first. It's, it's, thank you, Jonah. You've done a great job come in the first year and take over and you've done a great job and I, I think everybody appreciates the service you give us up here so and with that being said uh, hold on Randy they're saying they can't hear I'm sorry you want, you want this closer no oh they can't hear period well, that's good that I can transfer the gavel so they can visually see what's going on. <laughs> Thank you.
working. <laughs> We're still trying to get out to where everybody can hear us up here before we go any further. Can anyone comment whether they can, if they can hear, can someone comment? Experience from sitting here before. I never test. Can you hear now? No, there's no. The mic is not acting as if it's hearing anything. Right. So it can hear when I'm just using the computer sound, but not when I'm using the sound system for some reason, even though it's plugged in here. Sorry everybody, we're having a little technical difficulties. That didn't work too well. Well, it's going to feed back. Does it work I off can, another mic? I can switch it to where it's coming through through my computer audio, but you're going to have to really speak into the microphone and I may have to repeat you what you're saying. Because it'll pick up, pick up a little bit of the speaker <coughs> in the room. I think I should do that. <laughs> 
relationship, not the office. Yeah. yeah. I apologize. I was just suggest a recess. Yes, take a five minute recess here. to let everyone on the meeting know we are having some technical difficulties with the sound system so we are going to actually shut the meeting down and then restart it and hopefully it will uh, resolve so if, just bear with us for a couple of minutes I'm going to end the meeting now so you will need to rejoin and plus I have the wrong packet up <laughs> Okay. You see it? Yeah. I'm gonna shut this one. Camera on here. That one's on. And now. This conference will now be recorded. Okay. I believe we're on now. Okay. All right. Marion County Commission meeting, January 19th. We went through... Today's January 11th. 11th. Uh, Sorry. Oh, the next one is the wrong one here. <clears throat> January 11th. I'm scooting ahead. Uh, we went through reorganization up here already. Uh, they've elected Randy as Donkey as chairman, and uh, Dave Crowfoot as vice chairman for this year. I would like to thank Jonah for his service that he did for last year as chairman. I hope I can fill the shoes as good. So, with that being said, I'd like to also let everybody know that we have seated a new commissioner over here, Dave Mueller, as a commissioner for he took uh, his district spot. Um, welcome aboard, Dave. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, uh, I think you got to echo the comments. I think Jonah did a fantastic job. I had the, the joy of sitting in that seat behind with no responsibility. So it was, uh, it was, it was, uh, it changed, it. it changed 30 minutes ago when you held your right hand up. Yes. It, yes. it, it, it changed. So yes. I appreciate and, uh, everything that, that each of you have done and look forward to serving with you. Um, I'm looking forward, Jonah was looking forward to getting out of this spot as he's come close to the end of the year. I will tell you that we've got enough commissioners now that this will probably be my last term and I will set out there and everybody else will take a turn up here before I get I hope that uh, this is probably be my last term sitting here, so unless something happens. But uh, it's, it is a job to be done and, and reckoned. I think us as commissioners do have some jobs this year and this term to accomplish. We've got some facing us right off the get-go, and uh, hopefully we'll address them and, and take care of them and move forward, because that's, that's what we're looking forward to. And, uh, and we always know that you, the public, will come tell us if we're not doing a good job. So thank you for keeping us straight. We appreciate that. Tina, are you about ready? Or are you still playing with uh, We still have some well, mic difficulties here. You're stuff. just going to have to speak really loud and as close to the mic as you can. I'll see if I can turn you up. Can everyone else make sure their microphone is on? Try turning it off and on, Joe. Everybody is on, it's just, there, I can hear it now. No, it's got a real sensitive one. Well, Kent's, Kent's really does. Yeah, some of them are real quiet. Yeah. Check, check. Yeah. yeah. All right. Okay, we'll hope for the best here. All right, I'm moving. You ready, Kent? Yes. All right, well. <laughs> We just had some de technical difficulties. That's just, just the way it goes. Uh, going into public comments. Anybody has any public comments? We don't have none in the public here in the building. Anybody online? I don't see nothing either, so we'll move ahead. Administrative business. Tina? All right. In your packet, I just gave you kind of a, an overview of, of the reorganization from last year. Um, you also have 
department revenue reports in your packet and the, some basic information, tonnage reports, recycling reports for the transfer station. Um, on the reorganization, we do not need a new resolution for the legal publisher as our uh, resolution that we adopted in 2018 is in effect until rescinded or replaced. The, um, the resolution for the mileage rate, the salaries of the elected officials will be presented for your approval next week. Um, and then uh, really the only action that we need to start the year um, is the, um, the motion and vote to approve all Marion County banks as uh, depositories for the county. Do I hear anybody want to make that motion? Jonah made the motion to approve. New second. Second. Dave second. Uh, for to approve all Marion County banks for deposition for deposits of Marion County money. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Five zero. Okay. And uh, our working bank for payday this year is the Tampa State Bank. We rotate that every three years. So. Okay. Okay. Uh, in your packet then as I said you had the information on the revenue reports which I will uh, just does the uh, mileage rate stay the same the mileage rate the IRS mileage rate stayed the same at 57 and a half cents and judicial is using that rate so uh, is it are, uh, are you all okay with me preparing the resolution with that same rate then I'm fine. okay so we'll have that for you for next week okay um, we did have it ready, but then we were, since we're since you all are talking about wages today, we didn't want to do the elected officials salaries until we know what you're going to do with wages. So, okay. Did notice? I, I don't know, Mr. Chairman. Um, parking lake report. Just had a question on the total lines. I'm on the revenue. Oh, revenue. Yeah. Control shift. Uh, the, uh, yeah, the total line, look up here. Um, total line all the way to the bottom right. And if you go across the bottom, it doesn't seem to calculate. But it does seem to calculate if you go up and down. Just wondered if there was, which, which truth was it, I guess. Is it the trailer being off on the first half? Uh, we can we can look at that okay. after the meeting and get it corrected for you and, and bring that back. Okay. Those are prepared by the department the departments themselves, and okay. so we be just in. provide them yeah. really. <laughs> then we can note it. Uh, yeah, send Isaac to email or something so we can look at it. Okay. Sometimes those formulas get out of whack. Right. So I just figured it was Excel and it, it, it dropped one more cell and so yep. yeah. All right. Thanks for bringing that to our attention. We can get that and corrected and went back before the board. Is there any other questions? Do they do we have to do anything with salaries? Well, that's salaries of elected officials. Right, which we'll do next time. So we're good for, uh, I'll prepare a resolution. Oops. And all the, all the other assignments, are we going to do that next week too, or are we going to yes. do that today? For the different, for the outside boards? Yeah, the yes, because I don't have that list in front of me okay. right now. And all yes, right. we will do that next week. All right, so that'll be on our next week's administrative business. Then. Yes. All right, so the next item, if you're ready, yep, the ahead. next item of um, admin is the, are the January 4th and January 5th minutes. Do I hear a motion for January 4th meetings? I'll make a motion to approve January 4th. Do I hear a second? A second. I have a motion by Jonah to approve January 4th meetings, and second by Dave Crowfoot. All those in favor say aye. 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 Five zero. Oh. Now we'll move to the 5th. I'll make a motion to approve the January 5th minutes as written. I would do I hear a second? A second that. Okay. Kent, make motion to approve January 5th long meeting and Dave second that meeting. 
Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 So two meetings is okay. approved. What else do you have? You have a pin handy to sign? Yes. Okay. We'll be on the front and back side of this. Here's an official pin. <laughs> I, I've, got, I've got that one right here just in case. If you need another one, I got one. Right here. <laughs> do have two um, agreements for KDOT, but um, we can save that for Road of Bridge time, if you would like. Sure. One of them is for the Nighthawk night um, cost share, and the other one is for the um, emergency culvert replacement, and these are the agreements with KDOT. So when, it's, when you decide to do these, these are um, just need a motion to approve and to authorize the chairman to be the signatory on these. So we'll wait for, for Bryce to come up on okay. that. Uh, and that's all I have. The emergency relief one was in our packets to uh, save all questions for Bryce when he comes up because I do have some on that. Uh, okay. We're a little bit ahead. Of I think they may have both been in your packet. If not, my intention was to have them both in. Maybe I would have read right through the second one. Yeah. And I, I forgot to ask, is Brad, is he actually um, coming? He is planning to be here today, yes. Okay, I need to add the add executive session of the Under Brad? Under Brad. Is that okay with the attorney and client privilege contract negotiations? So we'll add that to our agenda under down 1115 under Brad. Contract negotiations. down there and listening while you come he's on in up. Oh, oh, he's out there. Oh. I'm here. Always prepared. No, not always. I believe in the scout model. Try it. Yeah, he said you wanted to use this time for those contracts or something? Yes. Yes, we did. Uh, okay. the, which, how are you prepared? Which one do you, do you want to I just just sent the copies up, but that's all it is is a formal paperwork to um, that we've already agreed to do this stuff. So on the culvert replacement. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did everybody look at how we was to pay that back? I think you're talking about the cost share one. Yeah. It has information in it on that. That's on Nighthawk. The Nighthawk rebuild. Mm -hmm. The Nighthawk one has some information on uh, it's down there towards the bottom. So. Okay, let me see if I can the, get to the it. The Nighthawk cost share was the 65-35 split. Okay. Okay, I would pay 65 and we would pay 35. I think and I know what you're asking though, Randy. There was a section in there that, it, that um, you're talking about this right here, the capture. Yeah, yeah, I've seen that. That's what yeah. I don't know what page that's on, but it's down here. It's on it's on page uh, twelve. And the recapture is, formula. Okay. It's if the project is not used for the purpose set forth in the okay. agreement that we have to pay them back. Okay. And it's, since the road rebuilt, I don't see how it could possibly not be used for the purpose used in the agreement. Okay. okay. That's the part that stood out to me. Too. Yeah. Yeah, you, we don't usually see those in these agreements, I, so that was, I, I noticed it too, so I was like, hmm. Well, Bryce, go ahead. 
Which one do you want to talk about? Both of them? Any one of them? It really doesn't matter either way. We just have to have the official sign off on them. So. We have a new commissioner on, on board here. And uh, tell us about the Nighthawk project and the 330th up there and 30th. Uh, tell us about the. And 30th. Uh, 60th. 60th, excuse me. 60th west of Peabody. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, I, I mean, he's he's somewhat familiar with it too because he was involved in some of the letters of submit, uh, support. But um, the plan is to go through and do a full depth reclamation, 12 inches thick with cement. Either they have the option of a dry dry cement or a slurry, either one. In fact, is that's the one with the bids coming at 10:30 today. Um, our plan is to go from the Harvey Marion County on 60th into the city limits of Peabody. Then to go from Highway 50 and Nighthawk up to US 56, uh, going by Canada. Excuse me. And then also uh, 330th from uh, Tampa Road East, um, five miles to Quail Creek. I'll be the same. We'll go in and uh, depending on which process they choose, um, they'll go and mix it up, uh, lay the material back down, and we go back with a double chip seal. Uh, as a minimum covering to try to seal it back up until farther down the line if you'd like to put an overlay or whatever else on it. So on the bids coming in, is the double chip seal going to be a line item by itself or do you know? It is a, it's going to be a square yard price to do that. So I mean it's, it's a separate line item on there. Um, so did you have something in mind? Or? I, I'm just asking uh, since it's up in his area too, we discussed what it might cost for either two or three inches of blacktop. How would well, we how would we find that out roughly without? Well, we uh, just put things in context. The two miles we did on ninetieth, um, going west off of K fifteen last year, that was a unique situation. The contractor was right there. We paid very little mobilization. Uh, that was what 200 and right at 240 250 thousand um, dollars 125 a mile yep yeah. uh, we conservatively budget about two hundred thousand dollars a mile for two inches um, so four million dollars to put two inch overlay on that entire month now i'm not saying that's exactly it will probably be less than that due to the volume but the thing is that kills us is is the truck haul um, just like we do on all the rock and stuff is we either get asphalt out of Emporia, Abilene, Salina. Um, Newton has a small plant, it's more like 125 ton an hour, so they don't run a lot of big projects out of it or out of Wichita. So any way you look at it, we'd be looking at, um, you know, several million dollars on top of what we're already doing. We can count on that. Count on several million dollars yeah. without going actually out and finding out. I'm just throwing that budget amount out there. The so. discussion we had was we're building a base and mm -hmm. we're putting two inch chip seal or double chip seal on it. Mm -hmm. But two years or three years from now, we're supposed to come back and do it again, correct? Or so? Well, our, our chip seal roads are set up to be chip sealed every four years. We have a, we have a pattern set up every four years. Um, all you're really doing with a chip seal is sealing the top of the road. It really provides very little structural integrity for that. Now, again, um, that's what's planned. We could go back and continue to put chip seals on it. It's going to be still a better road than what we have on a lot of them, simply because we actually have some base. Um, is it the best choice? No. Uh, I, cho I chose to go with the double chip seal because of the the cost approach, you know, it takes a lot of money to do all this other stuff, but um, that's totally up to you guys. I mean, if you want to turn around and, and uh, we can get rid of um, the chips in and go with an overlay, I mean, all things considered, I'd even be happy with an inch and a half or something to that effect on that. Um, the original bid, um, well, the original workup with Cook Plant Strobel that did that. Uh, did this process uh, as I believe it was three and a half inches of overlay, a little bit of shoulder lighting, uh, replacing culverts, 
was about $7.7 .7 million. Um, obviously the county looked at that, but that also didn't include the five miles on 330th. So kind of putting things in, you know, you'd be talking about $10 million for all that. Um, I think the only discussion that between Dave and I that I, that I know of was we're just concerned about we build a good base mm -hmm. and the base leaves us within a couple of years after if we don't keep it covered, if we don't. Mm -hmm. and, and so, so that's, that's just the con consideration. So I, commission, I don't know. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, if you're going to do double chip seal it and make sure that that base stays, you might have to add, you might have to move up the reseal on those by a year or two just for the first time to make sure that it's performing the way it's supposed to. Sir. That's, that's the other thing. What's it cost to every time you chip seal it? If, if we do it by county forces, I think I figured it up, it's like $10,000 a month. Okay. So it's a, it's a relatively effective covering if you just consider that's all you're doing. Is it, it's, all you're really doing is place some oil down uh, to seal the road. The only reason why you put that good on there is for skid resistance. Otherwise, it'd be too slick. You'd never be, you'd have a hard time. But uh, again, that's that's a commission decision whether you want to fix that road and keep it, or because um, we drop that kind of money into it. Uh, whatever the case may be, we've got a lot of other roads that are. Um, We're talking. This is all these roads. Lightock, all of them. The 90 miles. Lightock isn't getting asphalt. No, no it's, it's double chip. That's the double chip seal. Everything is yeah. double chip seal. Let's just, get in a concrete base. Yeah, yeah, yeah. concrete base yeah. too. Mm -hmm. Just a basic question since I'm kind of new to it. Does the surface covering, is it included in the grant? Sure. Yes. So whether we go with chip seal or whether we go with a two inch overlay, the state would pay 65%? The state would pay based on what was submitted. So anything above and beyond that, we would have to pay the distance. Okay, so now, there's a cap. There's a cap on that. Yes, and that and that's simply because KDOT is budgeted only X amount of money. When we first submitted this, we didn't get it. Um, they had like fifty million dollars to give away. We didn't get that. Uh, the second time we submitted with letters of, of support, and we got it. We got the project, and I think they only were using. I think they used up to twenty million dollars that time. So the letters of support uh, worked real well. Um, but they're they're. You know whatever they award based on what I turned in, um, that's what they awarded because they're budgeted to. What so, was the amount on this grant? Uh, the the total bid was or total one that I sent in was uh, about two point seven seven five million. Now again, I don't know for sure what it's like when the bids come in. You know, it might be higher, it might be lower. Uh, it's a crapshoot. It's um, the first one I've ever done as as its engineer, but I've been involved in the process, so that's how it goes. But um, honestly, um, we've talked about it ever since I've got here. Is what what are we going to do with the roads? Um, you know, we've got asphalt roads all over the place that are falling apart. One of them that's showing uh, major signs of address uh, distress again is Indigo south of Hillsboro. We're having base problems uh, all over the place, and I don't know why. But um, again, it's a commission decision on what you want to do, and you just have to let me know. So that indigo, it got asphalt or just chip seal? Indigo has been, I think it's been chip seal, but a couple years I, I believe they did a surface recycle. Yes, or something a little like. surface recycle. Yes, last time. and I did, it. Right. Yeah, five six years ago. Yeah, and I do, re if I remember right, they towards the south end. They ran into problems with base, I believe. Yes, well, and shop, shop yeah. yeah, and uh, that's the problem when it's just like all these other roads is once you take whatever you have off the top, you're down to whatever's down below, whether that's rock or dirt or whatever. So, the particular place we sunk the truck in was the first mile on the, from the county line in, and there's a draw that's spring fed all the way through there. And when we the, the trucks, they would have two or three up in a row when they reheat, reheat, and mm -hmm. lay it back down. And I think it was the first truck sunk through, and from then on, we was in trouble for about 150 foot. And we went in, dug the base out, put some new rock in, tamped it, and then come back over the top of it. But it's still showing yeah. some signs down there. Of that. The, the scariest part is um, all of the miles south of Hillsborough, I see some issues showing up too. So, 
put that in the mix. Uh, you know, I've got 190th that needs some attention. So again, commission decision is where do you want to put them on? So just hearing that, I mean, I almost wouldn't want to put any asphalt on just because what if, what if there's a base issue? Well, that's the whole issue. We're, we're attacking the base. Mm -hmm. And that's that's one of the things I really want to push for is when we re rebuild the road, we get a base. We've got to get a base. We've got to start with the, the miles we've got to cover. If, if we're going to have our road department spending 99% of the budget patching, we're never getting anywhere. We've got to start building it right from the beginning and, and, and get a road that's going to last. Again, it's money. It's a lot of money, but that's that's what the five of us have to decide. Not our engineer. Now, I mean, we we can always um, uh, we can always make that decision. The bids to do it ten thirty day. We do reserve the right to um, reject any and all bids. So if we don't want to do that, we can go to something else. Um, putting this out to bid uh, with asphalt should get a better price. Um, then it would just be going to get a change order or whatever else from now on. So we do have that option. Um, so like I said, there's a lot of things we can um, and discuss about doing that, but um, you know, ultimately that's what it comes down to. You've seen inch and a half later? Uh, yeah, and, and what you're looking at is the structural integrity of asphalt compared to a chip seal is, is not even in question. Um, you get so much more support. now. Obviously, the other thing we talked about, like on Nighthawk, we did we went with two inches, but we talked about doing three inches in two lifts. That would be better. But again, um, every time you make that decision, it comes up at a cost because to add the extra inch was another, uh, was $125,000. So basically half of what it, what it was for two inches. So like I said, they just have, again, that, that's the, that's the cost we face is not having any plant local. It's all trucked in. Plus, that's a, a slower process. You'd like to have, you know, six, seven, eight trucks lined up at one time and they go from one end to the other pay. But let's let's discuss Christ before you was here, before I was here, the county come in and when they started this program, they did bring a unit uh, place in and I don't know how many miles they did the first year. I think it was in the year two thousand. But uh, Anyway, they brought a plan in, and mm -hmm. I, should we maybe attack that situation as a plan, maybe, to I, bring it I, up to, to do that or something? I've been told in order to bring in a, a plant, you'd be looking at 30,000 tons of asphalt, minimum. Um, so 30,000 tons of asphalt covering up a lot of roads, but again, at what price? You know, uh, say for instance, you say uh, um, 30,000 tons of um, asphalt, say, even if you figured $100, you know, so, uh, what's that? Whatever that number comes up with, it's a lot of money. Um, and the thing is, is, is again, like um, Dave said, is if we put an asphalt over on the road, it's, it's going to be great for a couple of years, but they're going to start rutting and showing those problems down the road even faster. One good thing that would help us by doing that is we, at least we would have more material, more more material and better material to recycle. You know, by putting that stuff in there. So, um, but like I said, that's what you're looking at is. Well, what we keep hearing is everybody says it's no cheaper than it's not getting cheaper than it is now. Is what we, we keep hearing. So, <laughs> well, and, and uh, I don't know. The, the, and people say that. Um, it might be now. The problem is asphalt is contracted um, commodity all the time. And so those dollar figures have already been set for this year. Whatever it is, granted, they're going to be lower. Um, oil is only one of those aspects. Uh, you're looking at rock. Um, even if we went back and did a recycle, um, the problem is most of the materials that they would mill off or uh, wrap or recycle material aren't very conducive to that because there's a lot of yeah, the chip seals aren't a very good recycle uh, piece because they're just a standard material there's really nothing heavy with them so you're basically talking all virgin materials which ups the cost but again it comes down to trucking um you know i've been tell, i've heard people it's uh uh that's probably the, busy, the biggest expense we have is the trucking 
But however, if we bring in an asphalt plant, they're going to have to truck the materials in here. So it's trucking regardless. You know, we've talked about bringing in you know, stock mile materials by truck. Um, the other thing is, if we did go out to do uh, asphalt on there now, um, we're not going to be able to do it right away because the asphalt guys are kind of busy, have, have kind of set their schedule. They're going to have to bring in a lot more materials to their plants, so we'd have to work through that. Still doable, but again, I don't know what that price would be. Are there any paid up projects in the area on the schedule? This year, not, this year. They're setting up a plan anyway in nope. the neighborhood. Uh, the, only, the only two projects that paid up this year, well, they're doing one this year, which I believe is on K4 from K15 or somewhere up around that way, Dickinson County. They're also going to overlay uh, 56 from Harrington to Council Grove. Um, obviously, close to one of the projects, but down here to this other one, it wouldn't be. The other pro project is they're going to let a project on Highway 50 in Chase County. Uh, they're going to mill out the rumble strips and then overlay the, the um, project. But again, the problem is, is um, that project over there is, um, again, it, 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 it takes so much money to offset bringing in a plant compared to hauling. And that's what they look at. It'd be great to have somebody set up a plant and do a whole, you know, do a whole year's worth of work, but they're like everybody else. They, they don't have certain plants. So with those projects there, uh, none of them are, are really, really close to what we need. Um, and again, what we face here is uh, if we get asphalt out of um, Abilene or Emporia or Wichita, they all run 50 to 70 miles. And for a short, I say a small volume, it doesn't justify bringing in the plant to do that, so they truck. <coughs> well, I think, I, yeah. uh, you know, when we when when I first started on the commission and we were looking on at you know how how in the world we could get a, a road to to have a decent base. I think our hope was our hope was for a county our size with the budget constraints that we had that we have that the concrete base would be our hope would be the, be the answer to a lot of these problems. Now we're just into what three years into three thirtieth, so we really don't have a great feel yet for how successful that concrete base is. Mm -hmm. But you know, when you look at the money that, that we've got to 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 work on the road, uh, that has kind of we're kind of have looked at that as being a race in the hole for now until until there's some until there's some monies out there, uh, just like that we, that we got when we did the Tampa Road years ago. Uh, they haven't come around, but that doesn't say that maybe they won't at some point in time that we can tap into that yeah and uh, then do a good stretch sure now 330th uh over to roxbury um that that is a reasonable performing road um the the cement recycling whatever else is only as good as what you have down there now to say that it's uh it's the um the, the way to go with everything maybe maybe not but it's still something that we're doing better than what it would be by not doing that there are a few issues up there that um, I think are probably depending on subgrade water. We've got some areas that have kind of moved a little bit, but again, we've got that all over the county. Exactly, though. exactly, <laughs> and, and that's that's the problem with that. But um, the other thing you turn to look, and I think they put what is it three or three and a half inches? Three inches. Three right. inches that they put on there. So again, that's a significant investment for that. Well, thank you, Bryson. This is. This is one of our big numbers. It's always a, one of our main goals with the commission is try to find some money for it and try to do the best we can. Yeah. Um, I don't know, Tina. Offhand, what's what's our? Uh, are we up? We'll be above four million after the end of the year on our uh, <laughs> capital improvement. Capital improvement. Yes. We have, we're at about four million right now, um, but we're. I mean, uh, that's where this. Or a share of this is going right. to come yeah. from. That's a nine-hour project. Yeah. And depending on where those bids come in, I mean, the bids are 
today so you would know okay. what that looks like and how much we, we, we may have there whether there's any room Bryce you're on for 945 and what else you got to bring up here today uh, a few th few things um, still waiting on the other uh, supplier to come back with bids for the new fuel um, island stuff up here um, I made contact with them last week they were waiting on a phone call still haven't heard anything so my thought is I'd give them another week and then see if they're back uh, I'm gonna send out tree bids to trim up the trees on the paved roads um, um, just just the paved roads for now get them out of there we've got some issues where they're really creeping in us um, one of the worst areas we have is 60th uh, west of Peabody but when we go in we're still planning on replacing the um, uh, pipes along there so when we close the road to the pipes we'll do the trees too so that saves us from uh, any extra mobilization traffic control things like that uh, last week we had a little bit of vandalism uh, the bath house or whatever else you want to call it at 170th and yeah, eagle uh, caught fire somehow we don't know didn't damage the tractor sheep's foot but they thought they would try to protect the tractor and then loaded the fire extinguisher on the inside of it uh, we've got it since cleaned up no permanent damage but just something that makes you know so um, they had opened, opened up all the windows and took a big air hose in there and cleaned it out and wiped it down so was that one of our whites tractors? yes yeah the older one so um, anyway no big deal on um, that yeah, but just let me know met with uh, Kansas Department of Emergency Management this last Tuesday I uh, gave her all kinds of information she was going to take it back to her house so she could spread it out a little better and she said we should be hearing back from her in about two weeks on how things are going if she needs anything else um, uh, for the most part we were very well prepared there's always a few things when it comes to um, what they need what they want so we'll get that back to her nothing uh, urgent uh, the crushing bids will be due this Friday uh, I sent those out got a lot of response on that too I, I was gonna forgot to say too these bids are due today I've probably heard from 10 to 12 contractors so I think we've done a very good job of getting that information out there so um, the we we're working with our d6 d6 loader excuse me dozer uh, a couple weeks ago and end up with some major problems this is something that's been done in a while, but uh, it's going to take about $21,000 uh, for new rollers and stuff down below. But uh, it's still, a, the guys not have any closed cabinet or anything else, the guys actually love it. It's a good working machine and only has three wires in the wiring harness. This is the closer? <laughs> yes. Nice. Yes. Um, that is a 1973 dozer that was purchased brand new by Marion County. Um, if we turned around and tried to get something different, we'd probably look at it $150,000, $200,000 minimum, and we don't need it. So, um, I thought we sold. What did we sell? I thought we sold it. No. Oh, okay. oh, we can't sell that. That's a classic. <laughs> <laughs> I turn that thing on, the smoke rolls, and it pushes. And so, I anyway. Think he, I think he sold some sort of a winch or some sort of a a part it said something there, there was a winch for the back of it yeah, the cable winch, yeah. Okay. and that that was not useful for us anyway so um, but anyway so uh, we could um, we could send it in be another ten thousand dollars of labor we feel we can do it up here but just letting you know that's what we're looking at for right probably uh, it's like anything else gonna have to get in and get somebody on it stay on it so um, the qualification based system for the Eagle Bridge repair uh, or the replacement was done last week with Tina and Jesse um, and we selected BG consultants so we're going to get the process to start with that they're actually looking at some low cost alternatives so that um, we were hopefully can get a lot better reasonable price or a lot better price um, to get that replaced uh today we're starting on the 210 3 build from Pawnee to quail creek i uh, got a low spot there's a big culvert down there on the bottom been an issue for a while um, we went digging there's only about a foot showing underneath the top of the culvert but that culvert's actually five and a half foot tall through there so we have a tremendous amount of silt to get rid of and we're going to have to go out with permission we've got permission to go out and try to make it drain um, so it's uh, 
going to be quite an endeavor, but uh, if we don't do that, the water keeps going over the road and things like that. So, um, And then uh, last week we hauled in scrap iron. Scrap iron came up quite a bit. We hauled in all of our old pipes and stuff like that. Got $145 a ton. So um, we were pleasantly happy with that. It actually came up to where it's worthwhile to haul it in instead of basically losing money. So um, other than that, hauling rock uh, over other places. Um, <laughs> I, when it rains, it pours with motor graders. Uh, we got the two motor graders in the shop with radiator problems. The Volvo got sent to Wichita to Van Keppel to, still nothing back on that. Just got a call last week. Uh, another one of our motor graders um, is way over, flew, way over full on oil. So we don't know if the diesel oil is getting down in the crankcase or whatever. So looking at that. So like I said, when it rains, it pours with that stuff. So. Still looking at still looking at options um, for new ones and working up plans on those too. So. But other than that, that's all I had was uh, um, other than the big 10:30. So what are, what are going to do with those big pipes up on 290? Well, uh, we're still trying to figure that out. We can't <laughs> we can't haul them as is. Uh, in order to haul them, we have to basically get a stretch trailer or whatever else out there, or the other options to go and cut them back up into. 35 foot pieces where we could haul them. Um, that's why they're still sitting there. Is that we haven't? You think they'd be usable at some point? Maybe. They would. Other than the fact is trying to get them around it. You know, if we cut them down 35 foot, we can actually get them on a trailer with a little extra work. But at 70 feet, it probably costs us, I don't know, 10, 15 thousand dollars a piece to get a stretch trailer out there to move them. The other thing is nobody knows for sure um, how they got brought in. So. <laughs> But the, the, the people that we get them from said, no, we didn't haul them. So we'd actually talked about hauling them back down there, cutting them in half maybe, and, and make half, half barrels out of them. But they said by the time we hauled all our better did all the work, we just buy the ones they already have. So, yeah, and, they're, they're, and, they're, and they're way too, um, I would say they're way too valuable to send them in for scrap. Oh, yeah. You know, but. They weren't they, in that many years. Uh, 2012. Yeah. <laughs> So, but anyway, that's why we're sitting there. We just haven't decided that you know, we've got some places we can look at. Uh, those places we're looking to put them in, we have temp permits, working with Sharon and the state on those. So. I thought we uh, bought them all from the railroad. That he said that he, they did not have a record of these, these yep. weren't, these didn't have any uh, of those ends on them, like those railroad cars. They cut them off. They cut them off, uh, the, the round portion. Yeah, okay. yeah, they cut the domes off. Yeah. So anyway, they're they're sitting there for now until we figure out what we're going to yeah. do with them. So, um, other than that, any other commission comments? Yeah, I'll be back up at ten thirty. Then it's all right. Can we get that? Sure, I'll make a motion to approve. Uh, <coughs> chairman to sign project number fifty seven C fifty forty six dash oh one. ER dash C five zero four parentheses six oh one. So, all right, I have a motion by Jonah. Do I have a second? Dave Mueller second. All those in favor say aye. 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 I also would like to make a motion to approve the agreement for our chairman to sign project number fifty seven KA. 6008-01. Second. Second by Kent. Second by Kent. A motion by Jonah, second by Kent. All those in favor say aye. 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 He just loves to have the chairman sign now. Okay, so there's, <laughs> this is well, two sets of it. He stated the motion. <laughs> well, and now <laughs> you didn't have to restate the motion. And, yeah. and, and now you gotta be careful, Dave and Dave. And yeah, 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 yeah. So. That's why I that's tried your David. David. David and David. David. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah, they just. Uh, uh, I think it's on the. No, they gotta make sure they gotta make sure they go. Oh, I yes, see. Yes. 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 Sorry. Yes. Sorry. All right. I'll be back at ten thirty then. Thank you. For the general public. Right. There you go. Good point. You gotta have that reflectivity to see if somebody's got it. Oh, right. Gets you. Now I understand. <laughs> <laughs> Little mirrors here. <laughs> Well, there's only two. Well, yeah, for each. <gasps> you sit here, you got to turn on your reverse camera so you can watch gotcha. that shit too. Now I Keep an eye on Phyllis. That's it. 
I was really nervous about that. I've got yeah. the other set over here still. Yeah, I have never seen the payback deal like that before. And that's why I, when I read it. Uh, yeah, it looked a little scary at first. <laughs> yeah, I've seen a lot of those, so I'm surprised they haven't been standard language. Really? Well, they don't usually get too many cost share. Yeah. You know, like that, so. Just depends on the attorney that's looking at it. It's like the EMS scholarships. Yep. Yeah. That's not what I'm talking about. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we're done with Road and Bridge. Move on with emergency management. Randy Franklin. Is he outside? Uh, I believe he's on the electronic. Okay. Good morning. Good morning, Randy. Good morning. Good morning. What do you have this morning? I'm going to just give you a quick update on what's occurred in the last 45 to 90 days. Um, we've distributed all the remaining Spark PPE items um, that, we, that we were required to purchase. And then we've reconciled the entire project to a zero balance. So by our requirement of December 31st, everything was purchased, received, and distributed and paid for. So we, we met our goal on that. Um, we continue to order lab supplies for the health department, um, both the hospitals. Um, those supplies have to come through emergency management because the Kansas Division of Emergency Management houses all of the logistics issues. Um, we're working on emergency management plans right now to include the continuity of operations plan, um, emergency operations plan, and the continuity of government plan. Um, and in doing so, um, it's, we're also doing some work on the county's COOP plan and continuity of operation because that's where the continuity of government plan comes out of. So we're put, putting that together. Um, the, the trailer is completely outfitted and is ready for, for response uh, to include the, the refrigerator that was purchased for the health departments. Um, it's all together. Um, it's charged, it's been tested, and it's holding the, the, the very cold freezing temperature that it has to hold. Um, that is all completed now. Um, in the last couple of months, we've um, received and distributed over 16,000 four ounce bottles of um, hand sanitizer that K KDHE decided we needed. Um, I, I told them we didn't have 16,000 people live in our county, but that's what we got anyhow, um, which was fine. Um, we, we made a push before Christmas to get as much as that to the, all of the churches that were having church, so they can give them to their parishioners as they came in. Um, the um, Last, uh, in December, um, there was a wildland fire over at Highway 150 in Clover uh, that burned 960 acres of land. Um, fire departments called me for assistance. I requested air support from Kansas Division of Emergency Management and also the Kansas Support Service uh, with Black Hawk helicopters and air tankers. Um, they weren't available um, because at the time they called for them once they ramped everything up it would be dark and they can't fight fires at nighttime because you can't see other things out there. So we weren't able to get those. I did also contact Fort Riley for a possible mutual aid response. Um, and they too were, were already at another fire over in, in um, Harvey County, uh, which started before ours. Um, we've developed scheduling um, concerns for the Kansas planner, working through that. Um, it's some ongoing things, um, continue to inform the public about weather situations, bad weather that's going on. Um, not sure we're going to get a winter, <laughs> um, but, it's, but, but we do get a little bit of cold air, so that, that might help out out there for the farmers. Um, continuing conference calls daily with state and regional agencies, um, vaccination meetings with public health and the hospitals, and coordinating the logistics of getting them to where they need to go. Um, and then updating all the, the additional plans. And here in about an hour and a half, no, less than that, about an hour, uh, the NACO Leadership Academy will be in. I'll participate in that. Anything else? Any questions by the commission? Uh, this is David Mueller. Oh, one second. Thanks. Now you can go ahead. Okay. You had me shut off. I did. <laughs> uh, David Mueller, I'm just going to say thank you for distributing to the churches. I know ours participated in that, and it was well received. So thank you for thinking of that area. 
You're welcome and congratulations on your position. Uh, Randy, is there, so right now you have no emergency supplies for COVID in, in your possession? That's not true. We even have no spark supplies in our possession. We do have additional supplies from other sources. And I have a couple of grants that I'm still buying supplies through. Okay. Um, I'd like to meet with you and uh, see what we have and see how we're, uh, you know, see what the plan is so that I can bring this back to the commission. Uh, as of right now, I don't know if, if uh, any commission really knows what we do have, what we don't have. So you and I can get together sometime this week and so you can show me around what you got. Okay, the, um, the warehouse we have for those particular supplies are in Hillsboro, so we can meet over there. Okay. I guess we do the warehouse. Randy, this is Kent. Where's that? Where's that trailer being stored at? In the warehouse over in Hillsboro. Okay. Yeah. I, I have two warehouses. One's for PPE and one's for storage of, of equipment. Um, we're, we're fortunate the police department allowed us to use one of their back rooms that they don't use at all for the PPE. When did that start, Randy? I mean, I don't know that we've known it as a commission. Say again. Did, when did that start? When did you start using that? Probably about five months ago. Um, they're giving it to us at no charge. Okay. No. 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 Hillsboro. No. 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 Yeah. At the police station there at AMPI. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, if there's yes, no sir. other no other comments, I guess you're done then. If no other commissioner comments. Okay. Thank you, Randy. Have a good day. You too. Right along here, we department. Josh will be uh, hopefully. Oh, good morning, Josh. You look real interesting. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, Thank you. Okay. <laughs> he's out unexpectedly, so okay. Um, he said you guys wanted to know about recycling. I don't know. I don't know what you guys wanted to know. He was on the agenda last week. Um, what we originally <laughs> only thing we had was whether you send out the bills and you see. And I think Josh told us that, that you see the checks come back in and you yep. deposit them. Yep. So you mark every month off. And, yep. Okay. Yep. City of Hillsboro, City of Marion. They're the only two that we are billing. Yes. And then the personal ones, they just pay cash. Is there anything else? Yes. Don't. Mr. Chairman, I believe we were wondering about a balance sheet at one point of incoming and outgoing. That's, that's what I was just talking yeah. about. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I've got one. Okay. I keep track of it for every month. Yeah, you keep that on an Excel spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. yep. yep, yep, yep. It, it shows what they're charged, what they pay. Typically what I've seen is they're billed for one month and they pay that previous month. So there's always a balance, obviously, it's just like ours, but, but yeah, there's not been any issues, but yeah, I could get that to Tina. Yeah, I think just for last year, maybe. I mean, okay. Yeah, just for year. Yeah, that. Okay. it's not gonna really, Maybe maybe when we started charging, yep. from there till yeah, say that's, December, that's all I've got for that. Yeah. What was that? Was that the middle of the year? It would have been July. Yeah. I didn't get anything until August. So yeah, I don't have figures until August. But yeah. What was the other? Was that on the income side on some of the on the report on down here? I, I was looking through some of that and I, I was trying to find it and I didn't match it up. So you you haven't turned it in then? No. Okay. No. no, no I think I gave Tina something like a week or two ago just. I didn't know if that's what you well, wanted. Josh talking. didn't yeah. know. Okay. Nobody knew. So we were taking Well, I see Marion the, yeah. the, the tonnage and stuff like that. And I, so yeah. with that, the, the amount of dollars that they're charged. And so. Yep. Yep. Because it was based off of what you guys, you know, decided. Yeah. I, I think that's the only questions I know of we've had. Okay. Yeah. Yep. I can get that turned in. Okay. How, no problem. how are, we, are you involved in the transfer station itself down there? Did Somewhat. You know? Okay. Somewhat. Uh, do we have employees or do we still have employees or do we, do we still <laughs> Josh, have Josh is still running the truck okay that's that was my main question yes he's okay. still running the truck okay. he did that's meet it. with an individual last Friday okay. and I know he needs to talk yep. to you guys about it but right good enough yeah, that's, that's really been a that's been an issue him having to run that truck is yes. yeah it really takes away from what he's supposed to be doing I will. Uh, yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I will try meeting with Josh and get get a hand to hold with that just on the truck driving because we are concerned about him yes. and that stuff. See how that's going. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yeah, he's told me he's talked to well as of last week he talked to two or three people and they just didn't decided they didn't want to take that much time out of their because they're retired truck drivers basically. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, that seems to be the most. Well, I thank you for showing up and bringing that to us. And Another issue, I'll, and I don't think Brandy's involved in that, but you know, we've got that issue with people not getting picked up up there north of 330th trash service. Oh. And Josh called me last week and 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 they they contacted Josh saying, can we do something for them? Well, you know, we're not in the in the trash pickup business. And prior, I, I had left three messages for Waste Connection Supervisor, which none were returned. Well, I also at the same time started seeing Salina Refuse pick up my trash. So I called Salina Refuse. Salina Refuse has been purchased by Waste Connection. <laughs> <laughs> they have moved their trucks to Wichita. And so those Salina Waste are coming out of Wichita. There's still a guy in the office up there. They still answer their phone as Salina Waste Refuse. <clears throat> he said, no, we've been sold to Waste Connections and I've got as much communication with them as you do. <laughs> That's good to know. That way the guys know when they right. see the Salina truck down there, yeah, so, it's not out of county trash. So there. those, you know, because I kept thinking, you know. Because <laughs> we charge extra for that. If, so Salina, so. if that, those trucks are going back to the transfer station in Salina, that'd be easy. And he said, yeah, it would be, but our trucks are in Wichita. So they've moved them. I wonder if they shut a lot of routes down up there then. If they pulled the well, trucks out, they'd have to. I, I have no idea. You know who? I'm sure that they had to assume the routes in Saline County. I think but, still drop. But you know, I. So we still have that issue. I know that the trash service in Lost Springs has been contacted, but I'm not sure they ever responded. And you know, to come have them come pick up four or five residences, so it's, it's going to be it's going to be an issue. Yeah. Now, you know, the, the big thing is, is if they could, if somebody like them could put a dumpster out there and then just come pick it up. But, you know, I don't, I don't know how busy that trash company is. Somebody says they do Harrington. Right. You may well, know, I don't know. You know Waste Connections drives right by and they will, will stop to pick up a dumpster yeah. on the route. Uh, but, you know, it'd be nice if we could facilitate something for those folks up there. Because they, they even said, you know, if we just had a central dumpster somewhere located, you know, and I think that maybe they thought, well, if the county put one up there, <laughs> we could go up and pick it up. And, you know, I guess that would be up to the commission <laughs> to do that, but we don't, we don't really have a, we don't have, we, we don't really have it. We'd have to have a uh, vehicle with a, you know, with that. So we could load that thing up and then we'd probably have to bring it down and dump it and take it back. We, It'd be just like the recycle bins. Right, yeah. 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 But, I mean, I hate to see the folks up there not have a service because there are several fairly good sized operators up in that area and <laughs> they have a need. But what the answer, you know, what that answer is, I mean, it'd be great if, if, if the folks from Lost Springs would say we could go put a dumpster over there, but I'm not sure that they've ever responded to them. And I don't know them personally. Boy, dumpsters out there by themselves, that's, I've just seen it so much. That well, you get it, everything, but that's I, just it. They probably, you know, getting vandalized and pushed. I, it's, it's, an, it's an issue, I know. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they're, they're about the... <laughs> They're about the farthest away from the transfer station as anybody in the county. <laughs> Maybe they are the farthest. Uh, Tina, in regards to the Kent, are you are you finished? Yeah, go ahead. In, in regards to the, something here that I got on last week, I I went down and tried to to uh, for the waste recycling on some properties that either the houses is gone or something like that, and. Uh, 
it, it come to just discussion with me in the appraiser's office down there last week of, of how up to date we are with everything, knowing that some of the businesses create quite a bit of trash and how do we know that again today. I would like for you to pull out that article and give it in our packet to all the commissioners so that they see how businesses and residentials are charged. You, are you talking about the solid waste assessment fee resolution? Yes, yes. Okay. And uh, I just happen to be driving around and taking pictures of trash dumpsters in, in a lot of places. And I think the only thing, the only way that will satisfy my mind is if I get those addresses and see that they're being charged. I'm not saying that, but we've got a new transfer station down here and it all comes out of this kind of fee and I'm just interested to see how, because I see six dumpsters at one business, uh, maybe picked up twice a month or twice a week by the city of Hillsborough. I don't know if their businesses, Peabody used to have a twice a week on their businesses, I don't know if they do anymore for their dumpsters and I don't know what Hillsborough has. But it's, it's all amount charge and then when I work see down there at your place at the station I've seen a whole dumpster come in with a lot of grain and a, or a whole trash truck come in with a lot of grain a lot of feed sacks and one whole truck almost half of it's been loaded with that kind of stuff I know where it's coming from yeah. and I think we all do and then I think we take a lot of uh, Barkman Honey's, what was it, barrels that we have to put it in barrels and things like that? It's it's actual honey that's contaminated. Contaminated yeah. honey? Yes. And I think we do charge for yes. that? Yes, we do charge them at special waste. Yeah. Yes, but the grain, sometimes the co-op for feed, they bring it in on their trucks if it's a lot, we charge them. But if it's in a dumpster. Yeah. Well, the city should charge them then for picking it up. Well, yeah, but it doesn't. What Randy's getting at is it doesn't cover the solid waste. Um, it's it's Feet. not. Yeah. It's not. It's just costing us money to haul it all. Yes, yes. And, and I, I'd like for y'all to get a copy of that. So I don't know if you, anybody's maybe you've all seen it. How would you charge them a surcharge? I mean, the city picks up six dumpsters, but we don't know. We just charge the city by the time. Don't charge the city. No, we don't charge the city. We don't charge anybody except for a property tax. Yeah. It's a solid waste. Yeah. Solid waste. That's Businesses are charged. Um, but by the size of dumpsters that you get. Right. Yeah. We get a choice of small, medium, or large. Yeah, but if what it's I picked mean up it, three times, if you create that much, yeah. you know, it's, it's all in that agreement, right? The solid waste assessment so, resolutions basically lays out um, what your fee will be yeah. based on certain criteria yeah. of how, how much I know I get an impression up on it and yeah. you see it so okay. I'd like everybody to see it so that we know that well things have changed since that thing's been put yeah. in place yeah. too. I mean, right. and you've never changed the, the commercial right? No. no, never have and so but we've got to rely on these people to tell us what's going on because there is nobody going out here and assess that and then it's put on new houses and put on new businesses but are they ever valued at how much they create and so it's just a something that happened last week and I just said well I need to check up on myself and see what's going on so that's that's how that's come about we'll get that out and, and look at it and see if there's some questions see if there's some good ways to go about evaluating because we've never done it I mean I don't know that's well, we have I mean um, it's not done regularly but there are times when we check with the city to see how many times they're picking up for a business okay. how many dumpsters they have okay. um, we we sometimes do that in our office we work with Sharon um, in planning and zoning on some of them okay. um, but it's not regular you know, and we used to, you know, um, when, I mean, this is a while back when David Brazel was here uh -huh. and he was in charge of the planning and zoning and then uh -huh. also the transfer station, uh -huh. he did that as part of his duties. He would, you know, check into those rates and, and go up inspect and, and all of that. And we don't really have anybody designated anymore. 
to do that. So, I mean, we do try to check, um, but not every single year on businesses. So. Well, it just come to the uh, to my attention last weekend, and then the other thing is, is when we can, it's set that you can only stop it by the end of the year. Um, you take the assessment off the property. I'm not following okay. what you mean. The assessment for a residential is $100. So if that house goes down January the 20th, we have to pay for all of it this year. To, uh, right, it's how, however it was on January 1. And set that away, and that's something that I we set taxes that away. But this is a service that's being charged, and well, it's not a service; it's a fee. Yes, it's a fee. So, so I'm I'm saying if if the property has no livable quarters, January one, everything's January one. It's, I believe it was probably set that way way back because yeah, that's when the appraiser sets everything and, and so like um, that's what we had to go by so yeah uh, just like some input on that because uh, I know there's people out there that pay quite a bit off so thank you I think we're done with you <laughs> <You're> <laughs> thank you <laughs> Well, 10.30 is well, about to approach here. Well, I'm going to go check and see how many bids have gotten. Right, I know, but they're in our office. Okay. The bids come into our oh, okay. office. Oh, okay. Yeah, there is good flow. Yeah, you got a strip. I'm not buying this. Prices. I thought it was. I don't know what you call it, ironic, whatever else. We're starting with a new commission and we're having technical difficulties. Yeah. You know, yeah. Lloyd set me up with a laptop. First time, couldn't get the password to work. Sure, sure. Good. But you know why he did that? Because he was just laughing. <laughs> he was. That's you know, exactly yeah. right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that one letter. Yes, yes, yes. I don't envy his job with all the the technological stuff, but just all the, the spam and the phishing and the malware and stuff like that that's coming out. It's just, uh, it's, even, even when there's nothing, just trolling through this, yeah. uh, the traffic, yes. just checking to see if there's yes. something there. Yeah. 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 Five, yeah. Five days later, everything's different. You yeah. You got it nailed down. Well, like I said, I know with Nicholas over there, all the people he could put on that Nicholas just yeah. that stuff up. You know, he's focused and he's watching that stuff. Big brother. Yeah. I just see him. He's back over looking over there. Right? Yeah. So. Are you wanting to come in for the bid opening? Yeah. Yeah. Guys, come in. How many do we have? I think there's just two, though. Three. 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 Okay, okay we've got a couple chairs there behind the door, so if you just kind of want to try to space them out a little bit. Sure. Come on in. Hi, thank you. Where would you like to There's some chairs over here. And staff out. Rush? Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> I'm okay sitting here. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't have to sneak by you. Oh, I'm so sorry. I always travel to Los Angeles. <laughs> Construction, Wichita, Kansas. Rock solid stabilization and reclamation from Jeff Ramlow. Uh, Geneva City, Wisconsin. Another chair. Andale Construction. 
Wichita, Kansas. This is M and Carmel Stabilization Group. Mount Carmel. Mount Carmel. Mount Carmel, Mount Carmel Stabilization Carmel. Group. Mount Carmel, Illinois. Bettis Asphalt Construction, Topeka, Kansas. Coughlin Company, Incorporated, St. George, Utah. What all is our bids supposed to include? What you'll have in there, their, their bid, they can either choose alternate one or alternate two. So whatever their bid was, it should be all under each one of those alternates. So, so it's base bid. Base bid is one. The, well, there's they either choose this one or this one, okay. and, and they they both have the same things in them except for the different types of SDR. Bob Burke can't be the person we open. Ed Bond. This is the total of, well, that's alternate two. Right, right. That's, that they'll either have alternate one or alternate two. Okay, this is the total of alternate two. Two million, nine hundred twenty-six thousand, one hundred fifty-five dollars even. Two million, nine hundred. $926,155. See if there's anything else here. That should be it. Solid stabilization and reclamation. Geneva City, Wisconsin. Their bid alternate addenda one? Yeah. Okay. We had one addenda, yep. Okay. Three million one hundred and ninety-four thousand four hundred thousand. Even. Four hundred dollars even. One million three million one hundred and ninety-four thousand four hundred dollars. Even. That was alternate two. Yes. Did, one. One. Was it addendum one? One. Addendum, addendum one. one, but they chose alternate two though. Correct. Yes. Okay. Alternate. Okay. alternate two. Yes. Alternate two bid, yes. And they just acknowledged they got yes. Yeah. Addendum one. <coughs> Looks like there are other stuff to change up midstream. Uh, changed a few <laughs> rock things and oil things. So. Okay. Okay, this glass one didn't go very good. I'm just going to pass that one down. And Dale Construction. Super slurry base with double chip seal. Yes. Is three million nine hundred and sixty-five thousand eight hundred and thirty-six dollars even.
Mount Carmel Stabilization Group. $65,939. All these will be turned over to Bryce to check for bid bonds and stuff like that. Then be less than all the, the plan is, rates. Yeah, the plan, the plan is uh, to have that back to the commission Tuesday next week. Tuesday yeah, next we week. have a potential bid award on the calendar. It gets us 10.30. Mm -hmm. Okay. Next Tuesday. I can't see that far without my glasses. Mm. <laughs> Take your mask off. Yeah. 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 So. You're correct. 10.30, yes. <laughs> we are with Bettis Asphalt Construction from Topeka, Kansas. Bid on alternate one, bid on alternate two, three million five hundred ninety six thousand nine hundred ninety three dollars and forty cents. Coughlin Company, eight one nine in St. George, Utah. $53,500 even. Should be okay. You want to recap? Uh, Mount Carmel was $3,665,939 even. And or excuse, that was uh, alternate two, alternate one for Andale, three million nine hundred sixty-five thousand eight hundred thirty-six dollars even. Coughlin was number two or alternate number two, two million six hundred fifty-three thousand five hundred dollars. Burkamp was alternate two, two million nine hundred twenty-six thousand one hundred fifty-five dollars even. Rock Solid on uh, alternate two was three million one hundred ninety-four thousand four hundred dollars even. And finally, alternate two with Bettis was three million five hundred ninety-six thousand nine ninety-three four. That job with everybody. That's what I got. Okay. All right. First of all, I'd like to say thank you to all the bidders out here. We have Bryce look them over to make sure it's everything's satisfactory, mm -hmm. and then we'll let the bid next Tuesday. I think what time do you say? Ten thirty. Ten thirty. Yep. Thank you. Bond. 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 Bond rates. Make sure that I, I don't see anybody swinging them. Swinging that oh, but the bid bonds and everything else. Yeah, uh, yeah that, that, that I think um, the less specifically noted, they wouldn't they would include that in their cost. So, is there any comments by any construction people that they'd like to say? 
All right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. much. I had to do it. Well, I got here a quarter till I couldn't stand hanging around the courthouse. The judge signed Dave by uh, mistake earlier, so he needs to sign it. Why you're not official? Yeah. Uh, we're gonna start all over. We're gonna start all over. He didn't have any authority through this whole meeting. It does not have to Why wasn't there some bids from Utah and out of state? Would they would they subcontract to somebody? Yeah, tell you that. Enough dollars. Enough dollars. Enough yeah, dollars. Mobilize. Yeah. Yeah. mobilize. After a certain amount of miles, yeah. it, it's just more miles. It's not a big deal. Yeah. Yeah, isn't that much different from Topeka? To right. Once you mobilize. Once you get the stuff loaded, strapped down, everything, it's just it's just more miles at that point. It's not. A lot of workers are going to mobilize, too. Wow. That was kind of what, what was the two low bids? Uh, Bird Camp and the one from Utah. Yeah, Bird Camp and Coughlin. Coughlin was a low bid. Yeah. Yeah, the Utah company was 2.653 and uh, Bird Camp was 2.926. <laughs> After the first two, we went through with Burkamp and Rock Solid. I was thinking, man, that's pretty tight. <laughs> so that would be two and three. I mean, that was 100,000. Now, I, I noticed the alternate one and alternate two, and I guess we need to specify what's the difference there yeah. between those two. One was a slurry, right? And then the other yeah. one was a con con So drink. slurry and dry? Yeah. Sounds like the slurry is the most expensive bid we got. The alternate one. Which is better? Yeah, I don't know. That would be the price. What uh, who did we have up on the three thirty at camp? Do you remember? Bird Camp. Bird Camp had that contract. Yeah. But Andale put down the concrete. That's right. Yes. <laughs> they yeah. sub subbed that out to them. They're they're the they're kind of the main one in the state, I think, when it comes to concrete base. Handale. Handale concrete. They were the first first one in the state. Yeah, they're the big one in Wichita right now. Yeah, they ten forty five is coming up on us. Board of County Commission discussion, county wages. I didn't provide anything new. Um, I think, the, do you still have on the table at your seat, David, the yes. sheet from last week? Yes, because you didn't receive it. Correct. If I need to make copies for anyone else, I can. I just didn't uh, need another copy. Well, I think my chicken scratch copy yeah, is that, in there. Wait, <laughs> chicken scratch copy, right? No. Is it? Yes. There we go. <laughs> I got it broke down. Does anybody else need a copy? I'll just look closer. Yeah. Randy, would you like a copy? Yeah, please. How about chicken scratch? Yeah. Just breaks, Probably breaks it down. More That's important. Yeah, I forgot to bring mine. Yeah, yeah, bring. yeah, one cent break down. Oh, one cent break. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we used to, we used to be, 
This is a lot more interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, wow. Got, got everything in there. Oh, there we go. I'm looking at this one. That's empty. Yeah. 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 Survival right now. Everybody right now has the drawers. No servers. I know. <laughs> okay. It's been rough. I've been taking it for granted. What? what? Dave, is there, you're, you've been following along when we've been at these well, meetings. And stuff. First of all, since I'm new, uh, help explain to me what are we actually looking at? Today? Are we just looking at cost of living? Are we looking at salary adjustments? Are we just looking at elected salaries? What are what, what's the purpose of this particular discussion? I'm going to let Kent, he brought this up and it's worth starting from, and, uh, and well, let him describe what he just Dave, for the last on. three years, we've looked at a pay, a new pay plan. Right, right. We contracted with a company to work with the county yes. to come up with that. Yes. And that. And that plan has been in limbo since the day we got it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, we, that's something that we need to spend time on yes. going forward yes, I and, and finally get that nailed down. But I just, I, the only reason I brought it up last week, you know, we need to be fair to, we need to be fair to our employees. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just, you know, I, I just brought up, okay, CPI for, for mm -hmm. 2021 is 1.3% or whatever it is. So at this point, are, are we looking at the pay plan, or are we just looking at the cost the, of the No, the pay plan plan. is something that we need to delve into. Okay, so maybe this is just, this is a good faith, showing good faith in our employees that we care about them, and that we're trying to look out for the best interest. Okay, and, and if you would anticipate this going into effect retroactive January one. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That helps me. If that's why. We, that's why we needed to. If we were going to do anything with that part right. of it, we right. needed to do it today. And then, as we proceed, we'll look go back right. to the pay then plan. Right. Then we need. We need to. We need to. To look at that pay plan and Good. see exactly where we need to be okay. and, and adopt it Good. or not adopt it. Right. Now, what what year was? I'm going to go back to that, even though that's not the topic right now. But when was the pay plan done? Twenty seventeen. Uh, 20, 2017. So it's three years. So you know it, it's even it's even outdated a little bit, I'd right, say. So. But again, that'll be a separate discussion. That'll be separate. Yeah, I'll, that'll I'll keep those questions for later. That's day. gonna that's gonna take some time. But probably. that assures me we're gonna tackle it. Right. Most. And of then, okay. I, I'm just gonna mention the co the information that's on your sheet mm -hmm. is basically everyone that is on the pay scale now. Right with the exception of the commissioners. Mm -hmm. I did not include any pay increase for the commissioners. Mm -hmm. um, what about other elected commissioners? Other elected department heads are on are included okay, in so this. All department heads, all elected officials, all are except, 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 except for the commission. Except for the commission. Yes, okay. and it's Good. basically, Good. Um, it, what I was asked to figure was what it would be if a, a cost of living wage, or raise for a certain number of cents per hour right. instead of yeah. percentage. Right. Right. For and this does include full time and part time. Good. Does not include volunteer any of us. So in essence it is a cost of living. Gotcha. That's that's what point, I need because you know we start talking about CPI and those kind of yeah. things. Okay. Gotcha. Very good. The only other thing I'd like to add would be is when that plan was presented, there was a few spots that was overpaid. There was some, most of them was underpaid, mm -hmm. well, but the majority, I'm going to say 70% or they put their 80%. The question we can't is if we do something today in a, one of those spots that's already over what the amount is, what would we do when we address the pay plan? Well, when we address the pay plan, we don't have to address every, every level. Don't have to adjust. Everything. We don't have to adjust every level. Correct, but if you if they're above already, right, and so so what you're so, saying is okay. this is just going to aggravate that situation. Yes, so that was about my question to the commission. But, but this will bring up what? a bigger percent of the lower right lower paid people get them up to where they should be, and the ones that will aggravate will probably be in the upper positions. Yes, so sure. So you're not aggravating it by as much as if you did the percentage, the 1.5%. Right. 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 So that's just some questions that need to be aired out yeah. and because so we know and, and uh, 
Yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't suggesting any of these levels. I just mm -hmm. wanted to bring up so we could address it, because if we're going to do something, we need to do it. Good. I understand that. So I appreciate it. You know, we, we need to take care of our people. Yes. Absolutely, because we're having trouble keeping good people. Yeah, we, we, you know, we, people. well, right. we see how hard it is to keep good people, and we see how hard it is to attract. <laughs> so, so we have a person, a department head sitting right here, and so this same whatever we do here, <laughs> will, will, oh, you're just sitting here, right here. but uh, we will affect his wage too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I, I get again to follow up by. Make sure employees know this isn't the only adjustment that's going to happen. No. They need to know that this year this pay plan will be addressed, Excellent. whether it's next month or three months down. Okay. We've, we've, you know, we've been rolling this thing, to yep. kicking the can down the road. For, Someone said eventually that can yeah. causes this problem. Yeah. I said a date. About I said a date last year with that. Chairman, we had last year. Yeah. You can duck it along with. Well, then we're putting we're holding your feet. Okay. <laughs> All right. So back to the issue. Yeah. <laughs> but he was a good one. Yeah. yeah. Now that's is strictly any other comments from the commission before we ask for any motions or anything. Is there anything else I'd like to be brought out? I hear I mean, If you're just looking at CPI, you'd be looking at basically close to that right. fifty-one yep. thousand. With that being said, I hear nothing. No discussion. CPI would be closer to that. Um, I believe right. that the number was 88,000 for one and a half percent. Yeah, so right. it would have been a little less than that for one percent. And yeah. this I just figured on yeah, 10 we, cents per hour. Yeah. And then we multiply going, that. You weren't going strictly off CPI. So no, I just did it based on where everybody is now. What does what 10 cents cost? Mm -hmm. yeah. What is, et cetera. So the closest I could come up with, Mr. Chairman, was uh, 34 cents. And that right. came the closest because it takes the 77 and adds about 10,399 to it. And it gets you closer to that 88,000. So it was 34 cents. Mr. Chairman? Yes. I would make a motion that we pass for uh, 30 cents an hour increase across the board to all non-elected county officials. Wouldn't that oh, include wait the elected? Wait a minute. To, to all county officials except the county commissioners. Yeah, all county employees. Yes. All county employees except for county commissioners. Yes. Now, I'm going to ask my secretary here, does that... How does that affect you with the, doing this pay raise to the, to the employees? Then does that can you handle that? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I just I just wanted to make yeah. sure before we do something that you're not comfortable with. No, and then um, on the effective date, if you're wanting it effective for the January pay period, that pay period begins on December 21. Okay. December 21 through January 20. So with with your motion, we with the effective. December 21st. 21st. December 21st. 21st. Okay. okay. 20. We have a motion on the floor to raise 30 cents an hour, effective back Jan or December 21st of 2020 at this time. Do I hear a second? I'll second. I have a second by Kent for the 30 cents an hour raise for all employees except for Marion County Commissioners. All those in favor, say aye. 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 I was looking for the 34, so. I'll, okay. I'll, I'll say aye. Okay, we have Dave, he was aye. I'll say no. I was going to hold out for 34. We should have discussed it. Okay. So we have, we have, right now we have four ayes, five ayes. Four eyes. Four eyes, okay. No votes. But the reasoning is that's the reason. Okay. It's not so that I'm opposed to the increase. Okay. You have a no vote because you have to the right <laughs> so, okay. It's a little rough sometimes. So we yeah. try to do the right thing. Well, should have okay. spoke up. I didn't speak up. I should have too. Okay. Majority. All right. We have a four to one Correct. vote for the 30 cents an hour. And the no vote was due to was trying to get more. 34 cents. Oh. Okay. So it has passed. 
and yeah, retroactive four, back to so December 21st. Yeah, so. And thank you all. I think that's that's a start. And but what Kent said is the pay plan has to be addressed. Um, and it's going, take, it's, going to, it's going to take some time because I think we've got to go through every position and take a look at myself. So, I don't know if we can, maybe I can pop some of that off. We'll see. We'll see. It'll all be up. We need to bring it out and put it on right down black and white in front of us somehow. So. And did you want to, I mean, at some point, maybe schedule a work session yes. or a. Yes. Um, yes. an agenda time for that. So just let me know. Okay. You if, while you're on that subject, uh, the last pay, pay, pay plan, the last pay plan was done in 2017. Ballpark, what was the cost? Was there, was it something that Kansas Association She can give you a copy okay. of that. I mean, is it, is it, should it be updated? Oh, are you asking what the cost yeah. was when to pay the consultant to yeah. develop the plan? Yeah. It was $17,000. Okay. And if, to answer your question, it probably should be updated. Right. But. I guess that would be my question before we go into make that next leap, whether the commission wants a new study done or not, or updated. Okay, I have a question on the floor to the commission. Do we need to send that back to the uh, same people and ask for an update? Wasn't there a cost even they said they'd do an update for it or something? I can check with them. I don't remember. I think it was. And I'd say, could we just ask the county clerk to do that, present it at the next meeting? Uh -huh. Well, I'm, I'm going to give her some time in case yeah. it can't be done. Yeah. I mean, right. uh, she can give us a price. Right. Tell her, we can tell her whether to go ahead or not. That's the question. That's the question. Okay. Tina, okay. Can, the question. Yes. See what it's going to cost us to update it and uh, for the next week. Okay. 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 And then we'll, we'll bring then that we'll back up again. Okay. Well, Brad, glad to see you, bud. Sir. Sure. And uh, we've, we've added the employee uh, attorney client deal after you, we get done talking to you here. So. Okay. We added the uh, contract negotiation. Contract negotiation deal. Okay. But before we go there, is county wage plan, is that happy? Everybody happy with that? Good. Uh, we're going to go to EMS. Mr. Travis Parman. Yep. Good morning. Morning, morning Travis. Last month was a little hectic due to some COVID issues in our in our office, so we're we're behind on the, the quarterly write-off. But um, I would ask that the commission agree to write off ten thousand seven hundred and thirty-nine dollars and twenty-seven cents. Um, we have uh, deceased with no assets, things of that nature. Um, so you do know we work, Jamie works hard to try and track these people down uh, at some point. The, the cost of postage is, continues to go up and we get nothing back. So, um, with, with that, I have one question on this. Okay. I see, it, see a lot of Omnis on here. Yeah. And for two years is it after what they ended that they're gonna handle all their cases? Is that what the deal? They it? turn them over to us basically, they're turning over what they can't collect. Okay. And then we we actually collect on some of those. Um, however, some of them we've they've held on to them long enough or they come over to us and we, we still can't collect and then we hit statute of limitation basically. Omni so, was a collection service for us, Dave, on the ambulance. Okay. Any questions on the sheet that you see in front of you? Uh, majority were all out of 2018, basically. Uh, a few out of 19, a few out of 20. And just because we charge you, so there's still on the books that we might not be able to collect some down the road. And, and we do, we, a lot of these we'll put on state set off yet, where if, and, and excitingly, the uh, the lottery now plays into that, the casinos report. So, um, <laughs> hey, you know, if it happened, they hit a jackpot, they wouldn't go home with all of it, they'd send some to us first. Yeah. So, 
We do make attempts to collect, for sure. With, with nothing, nothing else being said, does anybody care to make a motion to write that off? I'll make a motion to write off $10,739.27. Second, sir. Have a second by Dave Mueller. First, by Jonah to write $10,739.27 off. All those in favor say aye. 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 5 0. Thank you. Um, end of the year, we ran 1,271 calls. Uh, it's actually down 108 from last year. Um, feast or famine with COVID. Uh, obviously, we, we want to run calls, but then again, we don't want people sick or injured, so we don't want to run calls. So it's just, we weren't sure how COVID was going to play early in the game. We saw that call volume was down. People were scared to go to hospitals. We, we actually, you know, we, uh, transports were down. Um, we've kind of settled back into our normal monthly routine, if you will, as far as numbers. So um, we do have a new paramedic. Um, some of you visit with her. I saw her pay scale come through, I believe, last uh, couple weeks ago, maybe. Um, I have another one that has passed the national registry test, but has not uh, gotten to do the, the uh, hands-on portion of the test yet. There's some scheduling conflicts there. At that point, that will put our, our staffing at uh, nine paramedics, three AEMTs, and two EMTs. Um, if you remember 2021, we were going to hire an additional EMT there, it was in our funding there. Um, as soon as I know that, uh, the one gentleman's through his medic, everything's good. And I think we'll go ahead and, and hire that position, fill that spot. And, uh, with that, I'd, I'd like to invite all the commissioners one at a time <laughs> to come over. I'm going to work with you over the next, by the end of the month here and, and get people over and, and show how our system works, what it looks like, where we're headed, what what goals we have, what we think for the future. Um, I wouldn't say it's a growing department, I, but I think we got things that need to develop and and, and make some changes and stuff. So I, I think one-on-one -on -one and, and some education is, is probably the best way to do that. So um, with that, I have I'd like to second that before you go any further to the commission because it is a big department, a big expense, and we want to cover everybody in our county Absolutely. as best we can and stuff like that. So you got to understand what he's facing. So yeah. please get with him and, and spend some time. And Could and, you uh, make a tentative schedule out and send it to us sure. when you'd like us to come? And then if we can't, then we can. That's that, fine. that way we'll make sure that. Yeah. It gets kind of done timely. It's yeah, done. looking here in the, in the next couple of weeks. Make it so fit your schedule. Yeah, and I try to be flexible for sure. But yeah, I, I think that would work fine. So, um, and, and Randy, absolutely, we, we got to look at doing the best for them, for the majority, you know, for the most. So, um, with that, I would like to discuss um, some housing options for our ambulance and personnel over at Hillsboro. Uh, we're there. So if you don't mind, I'll just go ahead and read through this. Uh, Marion County EMS has proposed a facility to house our full-time EMS personnel and equipment within the city of Hillsboro. We presented a funded option in 2020, in January of 2020, and are prepared to present a new option for 2021. In reference to the City of Hillsborough's recent letter to the Commission, I would like to touch on a few points. The City of Hillsborough has discussed a new public safety building for more than 20 years with no known funding mechanism. I do not find it to be a wise business decision to build, on, build with county tax dollars on leased ground. I do not understand how new construction on their site best serves all of the city, or I'm sorry, all of the citizens of Marion County. It's my understanding the current building that I'm going to propose shortly uh, for renovation is owned by a foundation of which I believe is not paying taxes as a 501c3. The new proposal involves a vacant building that would benefit all taxpayers of Marion <coughs> County. It's proposed that both Marion County EMS and Marion County Health Department occupy the renovated vacant building. 
between both depart departments, county taxpayers are paying out $27,600 annually in rent. Property tax paid on the building in 2019 under protest was $8,000. Congestion and traffic pose a safety concern for county employees, equipment, and citizens. Volunteer firefighters rushing to the station while the EMS leaves the building has already and will continue to pose a risk. It's the mission of Marion County EMS to provide the highest level of pre-hospital care to citizens, be a good steward of tax dollars, and create a positive work environment. I feel the current proposal supports our mission. I personally wish only the best for the City of Hillsborough in their quest to build a new fire police station. It is my hope that we can continue to work together as a team to provide safety to all citizens. At this time, I would ask the Commission to be supportive of Marion County EMS proposal and discontinue any discussion of a joint or adjacent facility with the City of Hillsborough. Comments. Do you, have a, do you have a building in mind? I do, and I'd like to go in executive session for that. Okay. Any other commission comments? If not, um, Mr. Gantz, uh, we can go in for property, yeah. property acquisition. I move that we recess into executive session in order to discuss property acquisition um, for 15 minutes or 20 minutes? 20 minutes. 20 minutes, okay. For 20 minutes with the board, Brad, and Travis. And that is down here. I don't know which number it is. Acquisition, number six, number six. And uh, until, let's see, for 20 minutes, be from 11.10 till 11.30. Sure you get your pursuant in there. Per, there it is, pursuant to KS, I'm looking for pursuant to KSA 75-431-9B. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Uh, uh, did you get it? This second. Be second. Oh, second. Yeah. Yeah. Second. Jonah. Excuse me. I'm trying to hurry this along. Aye. Aye. Okay. Good. We'll be in okay. executive session for 20 minutes. We'll come back out at 11:30. will now be recorded. Okay, out of executive session, no decisions. Um, do I have any motions on the board with anybody? Okay, motions on the floor. Okay. I think we will move on with the agenda then. Councilor Brad Jantz. Uh, we do have. Can, can we move Isaac next and do the executive after Isaac? 
Isaac is here. Is Isaac there? Yeah, yeah. Isaac. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Also. Thank you. Sorry, yeah, Isaac. So we're going to move. we we'll move Isaac up, and then we'll take care of the county right. council. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I didn't see who's out there. Thank you. It's quiet. <laughs> morning. Good morning. So I'm here to give you guys a little update uh, on the heated dock. And Brad, is that something we want to do in executive? Yeah, session? given what you told me, I think it would need to be under contract negotiations. Okay. Okay, do you have anything else before you get into that? Uh, I, uh, Brad, this was something I brought up to the commission last week um, about we have a storage area out at the county lake. Mm -hmm. um, and I wanted to talk to you about it last week. Is we're, I'm trying to get it a little more cleaned up and organized. There's four or five trailers back there that when I started three years ago, I had on file. Um, they haven't paid any uh, storage rent. Okay. Um, the phone number on the contact that I have is no longer in use, and I've sent them email letters um, in the mail, and I've gotten no return on them. Um, according to the storage use agreement, I think it's 30 days from notification to have that either paid or moved out. Mm -hmm. And I just didn't know what the proper procedure was to try to move forward with something with those trailers. We have several approaches. One, um, if it's been that long, it may be a declaration of abandonment, which we would do with the, the court. Okay. Uh, it's fairly straightforward, but we would have to go through that process to get a court order that allows us to go ahead and move the things off. And we have two choices with regard to that typically. Either we hold those things in storage, which I really don't recommend given what you've already said, because mm -hmm. we have no idea that anyone will ever come claim them. Right. Uh, or an abandonment with us taking, you know, having the ability to dispose of them uh, and move on from there. That, that notice that I give specifically said controls that. Okay. Um, so though either of those are an option for us okay. in this instance, and that's probably, there's several other ways we can go about it, but I think those are the most efficient okay. for us to get rid of that stuff. So we can sell? Yeah. Yeah, if we do it as an abandonment and we go ahead and establish, it's very much like someone who, um, uh, you're a, a landlord, and they leave the premises and they've got their, a lot of their, um, uh, appliances and furniture and stuff in there you can either store it or you can go ahead and do a declaration of abandonment and then we're able to dispose of the assets okay and then what I just need to get that like the information yep. from the vehicles to you yeah Is that the, something that it, are, it, what kind of trailers are we talking about well actually uh, there's one that's a it's an RV and okay. then there's like another well one's like a it's a Dodge it's actually like a van Depends um, on those, yeah. yeah. And then the other two are fifth wheel trailers. Yeah, camper should, trailers. should if they're campers, they should have some kind of a, an identifying number. I think they do. Yeah, they and should. We can go ahead and yeah, we can do the same okay. thing with those. Okay. And that was all I had besides the uh, the dock. Okay, so that would be contract negotiations for how long a time, Isaac? Uh, probably twenty minutes. Twenty minutes. Say. Okay, we will we'll, we'll, we'll go into executive session at 11.40, come out at 12 noon. In order to, we're going into executive recess and executive session in order to discuss contract negotiations uh, for 20 minutes with the board, Brad and Isaac, uh, pursuant to KSA 75-431-9B, uh, number two to consultation with our attorney. And uh, like I said, we'll come back in to leave at 11.40 and come back in at 12 noon. Second. I have a motion by me, second by Jonah. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, we will be back at noon.
This conference will now be recorded. Out of executive session, no decisions. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Okay. We have another executive session with Brad for 10 minutes. Do we want to take care of public comments, commission comments, and then finish with that, or just go ahead and take care of the executive session? Okay. Whichever. There's people that have been There's getting back there. on. Well, let's, let's go ahead and take care of public comments. It's noon here in case they got things to do. Uh, I'm going to open it up for public comments. If you're online, please get on and make a comment. We have no public here in the building. I see nobody opening up or anything. I'm going to close public comments, go to commission comments. Any commission comments? Yeah, Randy, I'd like to bring up just two things. Um, first, uh, at the last meeting, we said no more COVID updates at the commission meetings. Just a quick thing. Well, there was a email. I'm unless, sorry. Well, unless you had something that she needed to bring forward. Yeah. Yeah, unless you needed to bring something forward, we figured we could get anything we needed from the dashboard or um, update us on inoculations. Okay, I guess call for qualities. Just from my perspective, just as an individual, the rest of you make your decision. But from my perspective, I still consider it a major county issue. Um, I know it takes some of her time, but I think you know, 10 minutes of her time would be good to bring it again to the forefront of our concern and the public's concern, uh, especially with the vaccination up, 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 updates. I think the public is interested and I'm certain. Yeah, I'd sort like know how many needles are in, in the arm each week. But I'm just throwing that out there for the rest I, of the I think I will then just on public safety and bring her back. I mean I, that's let's do that. I've heard two already and I'll be the third one to go ahead and bring it back so that give us a quick update each week of what's going yeah, she on. She'll need to read that, that long letter that uh, she did email I can start putting that back on the agenda. We took it off for this week yeah, based yes. on what your action was last week or what right, you said. Right. Yes. She did send me an email this morning with a brief update. If you would like me to share that, I can print that off and share it. Okay. That's what I thought. I thought was going to happen. Happen. Yeah. You just do that. You okay. get a chance here to print it off. Okay. That way. We'll do it that way for now. Then okay. we can make that decision, Dave. If you don't, if we don't like that, we can ask for more. Right. Okay. I, I still think we get it. We, even if we get a written report, at least read it. Yeah. So, yeah. But again, I don't want to take her time. But right. at the same time, I want to demonstrate that we're concerned in the oh, issue. Oh, yeah. I don't want to show that we're just putting it off the side. Right. That's your point. Okay. Yeah. Very good. And then the second one, um, just from experience in other organizations, uh, cybersecurity, obviously a big concern. Again, I don't have any issues. I don't have any problems. But I think it would be appropriate if the commission would have uh, our internet tech person give us an update on cybersecurity. So again, we demonstrate that we are, it's on the top of our mind. And I think uh, the tech committee needs quarterly. I'm not asking for every week. I would like one within the next month, uh, if it works for them, and then maybe you know, twice a year. I believe that um, Lloyd meets with the Morris County Commissioners on a regular basis, once a month or once okay. every other month or something yeah, like that. Would, quarterly would be good. Quarterly would be but good. Again, it's another issue for our liability. Uh, I think it'd be appropriate. I have one commission comment is we've had an incident in our jail and we got a news press release from the sheriff. KBI was investigating, but we ain't heard nothing since. Is that correct? And again, I had no emails or anything from Rob about the incident that happened in the jail. No, I haven't. I believe I'd like to have an update on what's going on and then I don't know is it is it fair to say that Grand County Commission should know how our jail operates I mean I, I don't he's in charge but yet 
now the incidents happened. Um, I'm just I'm just asking how does the commission feel about this? Is uh, should it just be an update from him, or should there be? Now, we haven't really had him on like on a quarterly basis. Per se, in the past, have we? Yes, I mean he generally is scheduled quarterly. Um, today's his day, but he didn't have business today. Okay. So. Well, I I think going forward, if they are scheduled, though, it'd be good if they came in just if we have some questions. You know, they may not have anything, and they can come in and say we don't have anything. That it, you know, we might be some questions of the commission. So I'd hate for them to cancel their quarterly visit just because they didn't think they had anything. Yes. We, may, we, may, may, we may want something, but they don't. We need to sneak. So meet. he should, res I think he should get back and reschedule and then going forward, anyone that's scheduled on a quarterly basis should show up even if they don't have any business. Well, usually we don't find out until the lawsuits happen, and, and I just, I don't know. Uh, what I'm getting at is is just some, and it may, we may have to go in an executive session if he, over personnel, how they handle it, or something like that, too. I mean, I know the type of situation that they was under. Uh, I've seen that person react in a fire over in Alney. I saw an officer have to do some things over there years, a few years back. But... I still think there's probably probably still a possible lawsuit coming in over that. I don't know, but uh, so that's why I said I'm, I'm on touchy ground here with with this. But yet I still feel that we're in charge and we'll be named as Marion County commissioners uh, if a lawsuit happens. So uh, I'm just asking the commission how they feel. Do you have a? Do you have a regular schedule of updates from departments? We do. I don't have that handy, but okay. we do have some yeah. that come every week. Some are monthly, sure. some quarterly. Sure. Yeah. That, that was my point. Even if, if they don't have something, right. that doesn't mean they don't show up. Right. I can send it if the, if the board all agrees and wants me to do that, I can just send an email to all the department heads and just say, please be sure and attend your scheduled times or reschedule. I think that'd be good. I don't think the press is, I mean, the, the, I said the press, but uh, excuse me, fellas, I was looking over there. Um, but I'm, I don't think anybody's reserved, heard anything from KBI, and I'd just like to know what they're doing. I mean, whether they're, whether they give us an all clear sign or whether that's going to take six months or six years or, <laughs> I don't know. But I think we, we need to be involved too. I mean, we're, this, I can bring that up. So uh, maybe just send Rob and see if he has any information regarding the situation. Okay, okay. Get, back, get back. We have one last thing. That's the end of county commission comments, public comments. We have uh, Brad here with. Did you have something just to go in public first, Brad? Do you do you want the COVID update before you do oh, that? Okay. Yes. I just had to get that printed off. Okay. So this was from, from Deidre, and I, I found it when I went out in one of the executive sessions. So um, Deidre says that as of 7.30 this morning, we have a total of 527 confirmed, 258 probable. Right now we have 73 active and one hospitalization, and we have had six vital statistics verified deaths. Um, she writes, Marion County remains in the red since November 1st. The rolling 14-day positivity rate for the period of November 20th through January 2nd is 14.5% with 51 positives out of 352 total tests. The health department exhausted the supply of 70 vaccines for healthcare associated workers on the 4th of January. They were administered between December 23rd and January 4th and they have received no word on further vaccine shipment at this time. Thank you, Tina. Yeah, awesome. Is that sort of set up? Yeah, of course you do. Yeah, that's all okay. I was looking for. Yeah, the weekly deal like that would be fine. Okay. I was kind of hoping more than 70 would be that, but, you know, because we knew 70 was going to be the number last week. 14. Well, and that's just the health department. She, she doesn't have the information on all the, of 
the hospitals. And yeah, the hospital got 150 here. Yeah, yeah, they would do their own thing. Yeah. That, that's what amazes me. This, there's no coordination yeah. in the county. <coughs> I mean, each hospital can sell the Walgreens <coughs> doing some, yeah, the pharmacy and Hillgrove doing some. Central County has a um, dashboard mm -hmm. kind of an event, and people can go in individually, sign up, you, and there's a little form gives you uh, the opportunity to tell who you are, what the situation is, so that they can phase you and make a determination if you can come immediately. Um, and then they've got a central location for the shots, they take appointments, everything is done electronically that way, it appears it's pretty efficient, at least in a relative sense, compared to what all the other counties are doing. Yeah, but nobody knows how many doses yep. Marion County got. <coughs> yeah, I know. It's, uh, we know we got, what, 5,000 people in the county? I don't, More than that. I don't, yeah. I don't even really care how many got. I just like to know how many got. Like yeah, you put in some money. Put in the arm. Yeah. I just got Texas morning. Call this number to get signed up to get my vaccine. Yeah, I just got a text this morning. I got the text. So yeah, you can sign up. up. Who's the third? Age discrimination. Because I'm an old guy. <laughs> Who's no. I don't even know where it's from. I guess it's out, out of the health department where, you know, you can, if you're 65 plus, you can get your name on, yeah. Yeah. but they don't know exactly when they would try to back. Do you want to receive the call? Receive the vaccine. Yeah. Yeah, get the waiting list. Uh, we've heard the health department update. Brad, do you have anything public that no. I'd like to talk about? I went through that whole list and no, unfortunately, no. I don't. Okay. It's all executive. Okay. Uh, First, can't ask to have contract negotiations put on this mm -hmm. morning for 10 minutes. Uh, we'll start with that one. Uh, would each one of your subjects be a separate one, too? Other than no, contract, contract negotiations will get the, the vast majority okay. of everything. So, so 30 time. minutes? I think so. I don't think it'll even take that long from okay. my perspective. That's the one's 10. 10 the most. So maybe make it 20. 20 minutes. Let's try 20 minutes in. Let's try 20 minutes. I'd like to make a motion to recess into executive session in order to discuss contract negotiations with the board and Brad. Uh, I'd like to have Tina involved. And with Tina. And uh, for pursuant to KSA 75 431 9B for number two, consultation with our attorney. Um, we will go in at 1215 and come out at 1235. Um, I'd make that motion. Second. Second by Fiona. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Back at 1235. get carbon monoxide poisoning. <laughs> so if I, if, I ran, if, you, if I start saying something that... Now does it say REC in the middle? That's yes. Top? Okay, thank you. It's got, it's got a box on Dave's face over here. It's really, really zoning in on there. Put the little rabbit ears <laughs> Rabbit face or whatever it does. Uh, Let's Yeah. Dave Mueller, if you look into the camera, can you see a red light? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I can. Thank you. <laughs> well, it's going to be a team yes. contribution oh, here in a minute. I am. Jonah told me I can't do it because you said oh, you can't do it. This conference will now be recorded. Out of executive sessions, no decision. Uh, we have one more executive session to take care of. We're going to be for 10 minutes, and it will be for. Um, Personnel, non personnel, non-elected personnel. I move that we recess. For performance? Or attorney-client? Attorney-client. Oh, personnel, performance, attorney-client, okay? I move that we recess in the executive session in order to discuss personnel. But it's expressly through attorney-client privilege. Through attorney-client privilege. Uh, time will be for 10 minutes. We will go in at uh, 12.40 and come out at 12. 50. And uh, let's see here. 
Second. Until open session will resume at 12.50. I make that motion. Second. They are doing a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Bye. 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 your desk. I know. Calculator. <laughs> Calculator. I'm prepared. Make it really, uh, I can't hold my phone out. When we do the averages, we always stick in with them. Now you've got it now. <laughs> you've got it now, so uh, <laughs> it may be gone next week. Coming off. I see the red light. It's on. And he still has to wait for the words. This conference will now be recorded. Out of executive session, no, no decisions was made. I have one final comment from me is last week we, we did a bunch of, uh, I believe it was week, even week before that, we did a bunch of land bank due to the city of Hillsborough. They, they started their land bank or something. Uh, as I read through them this week in the paper, there's 10 acres out there, I believe it's their uh, trash dump or burn pit and stuff like that out there. Uh, I, I'm just interested in, they also have a bunch of properties that's just empty lots. Now, how, how can you put that in a land bank when you're just sitting there waiting to sell it? Is that, I mean, it's not, it's not disorientated property or anything like that. It, it's just empty prospective, you, you own lots and you want to sell them, but they're just sitting out there probably being farmed. Some of them, yep. some of them's not. I just, the land bank rules is something that I, I've followed somewhat, but I have not went back and researched very much on. The land bank rules are, are marginally standardized, but they're not, and they're not required to be outdrawn or created enough of them to know. A land bank is not like uh, certain types of other forms of uh, distressed property, although that was kind of the stated reason for it being created about 2009 with the state legislature. This all came up and it was coordinated with and not at all a coincidence that it happened when they were looking at getting a racetrack in the Kansas City area. Um, and it was a slick way to do some things. Um, <laughs> anyway, but it, it became a real useful tool for particularly like municipalities. You got these distressed properties, nobody wants to spend money on them. The person that owns it, it's, it's good money after bad. Here it sits. And the bank ends up taking it over if we're lucky because in a lot of these bigger banks, they loan money on these little houses and stuff. And they developed specific programs with different acronyms that I still use on a regular basis where they'll come in and say, you got a land bank? If you've got one, we will donate this to you and give you 10 grand or five grand or 15 grand, whatever their program allows for because they've got deductions for that. We're out from under it. The taxes are gone. You indemnify us and the land bank suddenly gets paid, they buy the property, I mean, they, they have the property, and they have all the money necessary uh, to, to raise whatever is on it, turn it into a nice level lot that can be used for economic development. Very slick, works real well as long as the land bank is properly run. Short form answer to your question with that kind of history in, in mind is any property that someone wants to donate and put in a land bank that is not currently you know, under some type of an effective use, and again, this is part of their bylaws, uh, is what they accept. You know, the bylaws that I draw, um, one of the things that almost all of these different governmental entities want is we don't want to compete with private industry. Somebody wants to buy that because they're a builder and they like to take their free time between, you know, homes that they're building and put up a new little spec home or whatever. We don't want to get in the middle of taking it from them because we have the advantage. Land banks automatically by statute wipe off all ad valorems that are due and owing. Five years, seven years, 10, they don't care. It's gone. If it has specials on it, it is discretionarily with the land bank, something that gets wiped off. They can either do it or not. Um, that's a real advantage we have to the private property owner who they're accruing going forward. They get them taken off because at a sheriff's sale from that day back, but the minute they buy it, now they're on again. For us as a land bank, us being any governmental entity, they don't, they're still not continuing. So that's a big advantage if you go out like I have on several of these um, developments, Bentley, uh, Benton, Junction City, the same guy from, from uh, Wichita went belly up 
Um, they didn't have the letter of credit that was still in place. Um, and 50, 60, 70 lots with specials on them, 13 to 2,300 a, a year. That's a lot of money yeah. to a government validity. Well, a land bank was a godsend because you don't have any of that accruing. At least we're not bleeding while you're trying to get somebody to take them and develop them. So yeah, I think they can. I'd have to look at them individually and see what Hillsboro's, um, I could ask Josh what they did. Bylaws. You know, what they did in their bylaws. Yeah. It's a, we've talked about it too, whether yeah. the county that, wants to. I was going to say, that being said, why wouldn't we want to set up a county land bank? I mean, why, yeah. why would we? And, uh, and the background that I'm coming from is being the mayor and council member of Peabody, and, and uh, when we had some lots of things, well, we would have to pay the tax on them. And so, so you know, and the of course, has, uh, we have some right county has property that too, we're paying taxes but on. At that time, land banks wasn't around. This has been over 15 years ago. Well, land years. bank, did you say, is 2009? Yeah. Yeah, it started, it's, I, I want to say, it was being discussed from several years prior to that, but I think around 2009 was when the, most of the legislation came into being. I have to, I've got a whole file on all that because when I, when they first started, I needed to know them forwards and backwards before we started creating them in different municipalities in particular. Yeah. It'd be nice if we had a land bank to put our distressed properties in. That it, it's a nice selling. holding and also a land bank. If it is run correctly, not always, but it, it, it is self-funding in a lot of cases. Like I said, one of the ways that they get started are, you know, these different entities that own them go, shoot, yes, I'll donate it to um, the land bank because they recognize that term that's being used in a lot of different states at this point. Um, and they'll even put some money in it just because it's far less hassle than them trying to clean it up, pay all the taxes, and get it resold. So they just get out from under it. Um, and since they're donating to a not-for-profit, They've got a tax advantage. Well, what we need to do is go down, at least the one in Peabody, that, that's one. I don't know if we got some more on the tax sale uh, this last time that didn't the sale or not, but um, we need to go down there at Road and Bridge and just get it all tore down, cleaned off, dozed, and clear piece of ground. It's not sellable, it's in the crook ground. It's, we just need to go down and get rid of it. I mean, there's no use of paying any tax on the damn thing, and plus it's a hassle. And, and that's what I'm saying, if we do that in that town, we, we need to spread it out to all towns too that we could so that could lead to that can lead to a big big deal but one house a year per town i don't know uh, maybe two a year we do something like that set some plans anyway to do something so that they get torn down I think it's, a, it's a good discussion to look at just bring see, places the, in see look the, at. the feasibility of the county having one yeah that's all i have any others um, I've got Tina looking up something with regard to um, our new policy, whether we need to act on an individual circumstance today, authorizing an amount not to exceed for representation, or if we can wait until next week, because I'd really prefer to do it with a full policy, but if that's not going to happen, if there's a hearing between now and then, we probably need to authorize that. Well, I'm ready. <laughs> yeah. That's what Rocky brought in was a croquet mallet to us. Here he's going to straighten it out. <laughs> Definitely gets your attention. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I've got two people to get with this week. I don't want to say it's for it's beyond that, but not that much beyond that. It was in the last two weeks of January sometime. Okay, no, we've got time. That's fine. No other requests today. Okay. 
With that being said, I make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second motion. Jonah, all those in favor? Aye. 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 There you go. That's more than I ever used that thing. <laughs>